Welcome to Travel Stories Unpacked, the travel podcast where we talk about all things from the silly to the serious and everywhere in between. I am your host, Ashley Newton. Thank you so much for spending some of your time with me. I really appreciate it. And this week, we are going to unpack luxury travel. And to help me unpack this topic, we are welcoming back to the show, Mr. Bill Coyle. Welcome, Bill. Thank you, Ashley. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yes. So, Bill, I thought you were perfect for this because not only are you just a travel expert, right? Like you are a travel guru in my mind, but I also think of you as a fancy guy. Like you're a luxury person, I feel like this is just the perfect topic for you, I think. Yeah, I, I you know, def- define bougie. I'm not sure what that looks like. Luxury, premium, upmarket. I do enjoy it. Okay, so there's so many words right there that I feel like for me, the average like just travel consumer, I'm like, what the heck are we talking about? So I figured let's just dive right in by defining what we mean when we're talking about luxury travel. So how would you explain that to somebody that just has no idea what that area of travel is all about. You know, uh, luxury and luxury travel, two different things. We have to dissect those. I think about luxury as um, temperature, comfort, colors, um, excellence all the way through. I think of uh, the idea of adding travel to that is, oh my God, it's going to be hectic. We have to go through the airport. We have to go through TSA. So there's elements of luxury travel that aren't always luxurious. But when you get there and you get to your room, or you get to your resort, or you get to this fabulous cabin that you're staying at, this all luxury, now you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm in luxury. And that to me is um, the elements of the room, the elements of the cabin, the way you were greeted, the service level. Um, are we getting fabulous food? Is What are all the things that are entailed in my idea of luxury? And I think it boils down to service and comfort. Okay. Uh, but don't forget, you know, there's there's people who feel very comfortable in contemporary brands, right? They may feel- What is a contemporary brand? A contemporary brand is our mass marketed cruise lines or all-inclusive resorts that we think, some people may think that that's luxury, but that's a more of a contemporary brand, right? Okay. Royal Caribbean, Celebrity, Norwegian, Princess, Holland America in the cruise categories. Then there's our all-inclusive brands that people have probably heard of, Dreams or Secrets, um, Ryu Properties, whatever they are, those are contemporary brands. Then we get into the luxury brands, right? And every one of our contemporary brands has a luxury sister or brother, someone that's someone that's a little bit more educated, a little bit more developed, involved in the brand. So, for instance, um, Norwegian Cruise Line has Regent and Oceana that mm-hmm. are the sister companies that put you into that luxury idea, right? Of course, it's more expensive, but it's also that feeling of service, of uh, the commitment level to your overall well-being. And I think that um, it comes with the idea that I'm feeling, I, I spent the money, I've taken the time to make sure that I understand what I'm getting into, and then I'm going to feel that. And that's really, luxury is defined only by us, the person who's doing it, not by the brand itself, right? They're trying right. to make sure that everything's luxurious, but there might be something that isn't. But did I feel like I had a luxury experience? And that's when we know we're in luxury. Well, and you said it very fast, but you did say that, you know, you're going to spend more money. And for me, that's the very first thing that comes to mind when somebody is like, oh, a luxury travel experience is like, oh, okay, so you want a lot of money from me. Do you feel like that's always the case or is that just sort of the easiest way to get into the luxury travel is just to spend more money? Yeah, it's not always the case. Obviously, you're getting what you pay for or you should get what you pay for. That's a key element, right? But I think some people feel luxurious if they're in their jacuzzi tub and their contemporary branded resort or cruise line, right? So I think that that's a level of luxury also that should never be discounted. It's the feeling of luxury where you are in the brand that you're at um, or destination. Earlier earlier you were saying all sorts of terms and one of them was like up market or up something. So is that sort of what you're talking about now? I think it's important that consumers in general, along with the travel industry, understand that there's levels of growing to luxury, right? So the contemporary brand, the upmarket, the premium brand, and then the true luxury brand. And I think that from a cost perspective, there may not be a huge difference in there, but what that company is trying to make sure that you feel and understand is what they consider in their luxury. Okay. So that we have to understand that there's gradual elements of luxury. It's not just all going from contemporary or budget to luxury. 
Okay. I love this. So I did a little bit of research before I sat down for this episode and I discovered something called the five C's of luxury travel. Have you heard of this? Okay. So let's have them all. (laughs) Go on. So the five C's of luxury travel, according to this random thing I saw on the internet is culture, cuisine, community, content, and customization. Wow. So how do you feel about that? Have you I heard love, this? How does it resonate yes, with you? Yes, those those five are uh, difficult to ascertain all at once, yeah. right? So we customize a um, a trip or curate a trip for someone, um, and we hope that they get all the other four C's, <laughs> right? And I mean, I think that that's <laughs> from the key, a travel right? travel agent from perspective. a travel agent perspective, right? We hope the consumer understands that as all of those were contained into one. But I think that each element comes no matter what, right? So absolutely, we can feel that way about all of those. Um, but I think that I think that there's always a concern that something's going to fall short, mm-hmm. right? So luxury customers, luxury consumers are usually the most discerning and the most who require the most handholding, right? So are they getting all of those and are they going to hold it against the travel industry if they don't get those or the concierge or the butler, right? Anyone that's going to be involved in that, are they going to hold that against them? Or are they going to just say, hey, listen, I got a majority of these C's. I'm pretty darn happy. Yeah. But cuisine is probably the most important out of there. Really? To be honest with okay. you, yes. And it's not just cuisine as in uh, what does the chef feel that he's putting on the table is cuisine. It's my interpretation of that cuisine. Did they cater to my needs if I had special um, dietary needs? Um, or was it that I just love every single thing that they're putting out there? For instance, we were just on Oceana um, for nearly two weeks. Every single thing that I had um, had uniqueness to it. Now, it Ironically, this was chef's week. So there were 19 chefs on board and they were making sure that everyone on board got some unique experience when it came to cuisine, whether it was the French restaurant, the Italian restaurant, uh, the steakhouse, the seafood house, um, all of them had unique things served. So I think cuisine is going to be very, very important for those. But then there's some consumers who are like, I'm not, I don't have a very, very discerning palate. Right, they don't I'm care. fine with a, with a medium steak from Outback or whatever the case is, right? That might be luxury to them. And that's okay. But I think that when you when you spend a little bit more, when you're expecting all five of those C's, you need to get that. And I think cuisine yeah. is probably the number one thing on there. Well, and that's what I sort of love about this conversation is we acknowledge that luxury is objective. Definitely. It's not like you can just be like, oh, you need at least this number of stars to be luxury or you need this experience to be luxury. But I do think it's important that you know sort of what you're talking about as far as like what other people who are involved in the travel industry or, you know, if you're planning a trip with somebody that you both have the same idea of what luxury means before you travel. Right. And the reason I agree with you on that is because my wife and I were on Regent, which is a luxury brand um, in December. Cruise line, correct? A cruise line, yes. And I was just on Oceana and I concluded that Oceana um, as a brand is better for the two of us because Debbie didn't exactly feel that comfortable on Regent, right? So we're, we collectively were not at that level um, of Regent. So we felt a little bit out of place. But it was like too fancy? It was a little too fancy, right? For was, you? Well, <laughs> I collectively, okay. like if I were to go, I would go on region all the time. I but knew collectively, it. we were on, if we were on Oceana together, I know Debbie would be so happy about that. Okay, a little bit more her pace. A little bit more her pace, a yeah. little bit more her style. Um, uh, people on board, clientele, community. Mm-hmm. The community was so much more engaging on one brand than it was on the other brand. And I'll say that there, there's also Silver Sea, there's uh, Cunard, there's okay. other brands that the community might not be as engaging. I love that you said this because I'm not gonna lie, you know, we all have our biases and our own like little hangups. To me, when I picture luxury vacation, I'm kind of picturing stuffy. You know, is, kind of very, you know, prim and proper. Yes. It's not like a sail away party on Carnival or Royal where everybody's singing and dancing. Like I'm expecting very much more sort of reserved behavior. Is that my own bias or is that an accurate sort of betrayal of how to conduct yourself in these spaces? From what I've seen in the luxury brand, it is you are accurate. And I'm never right. This is fun. <laughs> no, you are correct. <laughs> and that's why this brand that we were on last week was more premium branded, which had more community. 
which had less stuffiness to it. Yeah. That's where we fit in a little bit better. Which again, though, you know, if you, if you like that, that's totally, you know, your thing. But to me, a lot of people expect to cut loose on vacation yes. and expect to be able to have that sort of experience. So it's, again, very important to manage your expectations. And that's why when you throw around words like luxury, like to me, luxurious could absolutely be an all-inclusive vacation because to me i mean that's fantastic somebody's taking care of everything you're not worrying about anything but would you consider that at at its general experience a luxury trip because i'm thinking it's probably not probably not that's correct yes because um let me how do i say this properly by saying um commonality um with commoners um (laughs) People who are in, you know, the peasants, not, <laughs> the peasants. <laughs> um, I don't mean that. I don't mean it that way. But I'm just saying is when you go to an all inclusive brand, uh, you may get someone who could just barely swing or afford that. But to them, that's huge. And that's it. Absolutely. Sometimes you're getting those who can afford much more and they're going there with others. And they're like, oh, my goodness, I can't believe I'm here with all of the common people. Whereas when you're in a completely luxury branded. Um, it's rarefied air. It's absolutely. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Okay. It's more like, oh, these are all my people. But are they really your people? Because I discovered that they're not my people. Um, I, I didn't I didn't feel 100% comfortable. I like my surroundings. I love the comfort of it all. The service. The service and all of that. The feeling that I got. But I think that, uh, oh, goodness, I don't know if I could talk to the person next to me, right? right? You know, what millionaire is sitting next to me and I'm not a millionaire? I think I spent the money to be on there, but it wasn't exactly that I should. It's almost like in dating sites when you can peek into the next level, but you don't necessarily belong at the next level. Because you don't have that income level. Have you ever seen that before? I've never been on a dating site. Okay, well, I'm not on a dating site either, but we have a friend who is at the top level of the dating site and someone peeked in and showed interest. But when they got together, they weren't on the same level. Weren't compatible. It wasn't meant to be. I love the comparing to a dating service though, because I feel like that is so much of what having a good travel or vacation experience is, is just finding your match and everything. So I have a few more like really quick questions and I want your immediate off the cuff response on is this luxury travel if like this is involved, okay? Okay. So the very first thing that comes to mind with me, whether you're on a cruise or an all-inclusive is buffets. Will any luxury travel brands have buffets um yes so you can do world-class buffets well you don't get the food though the buffet is there but you don't touch it they're serving it to you okay so you look at the buffet and then you go back and you order and you say this is what i want wait no you don't you don't just point to the guy and they scoop it on a thing in front of you no so it's like that's not a buffet. That's a food showcase. That's, that's a food so showcase. Like... Because I'll tell you, um, as you know, I'm on the wellness journey and I was recently traveling and there was a restaurant for um, health conscious people. The, Ashley, you could not believe the size of the buffet. It was unbelievable. So I go in there and I grab my thing and they're like, oh, no, no, sir. You go sit and order from the menu. Yeah. This is what we select from. So yeah, it was unbelievable. All that stuff was there, but I wasn't able to touch it or get it served to me. That is so good to know. So if there is a buffet, it'll not be... Don't go in there and think you're going (laughs) to scoop things out of it. It's not the buffet experience you've had (laughs) in the past. Right. Um, Ooh, what about if you're staying somewhere that has a butler? Does that automatically mean you're in a luxury category? Because I stayed somewhere one time and I had a butler and I felt like the freaking queen. It was so cool. It's the best. Honestly, people say, what's a butler going to do for me? I'm like, oh my Lord, I just had a butler. Uh, 10 days. I've never experienced. I He was reading my mind from day two, to be honest with you. I think he just stopped even knocking at the door. He just came in and he's like, Mr. Coyle, I'm here and I have your fruit plate and I've got this. And today you're doing this, 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 and this. I'm like, oh my Lord, this is fantastic. Yeah. There were times when I was like, okay, I've had enough, go. Um, so I just think that the butler is going to add that level of service, but you have to be willing to accept the service that they want to offer you. I struggle with that. That's I struggle the key. With that, yeah. If they want to unpack your clothes, let them unpack your clothes. Stop thinking you're the first person who he saw your panties <laughs> for crying out loud. Let them unpack your clothes. If they want to pack your clothes, if they want to help you in any way, let them do that. That's what they're trained to do. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't. I can't. Like I said already on this show that like I had a really hard time just like knowing what to do and how to interact. And like, I'm not used to that level of service. Oh my goodness. And it was fantastic. You know what I mean? It was just, I wasn't a good recipient of it. I get it. But we're saying that butlers are at least usually a sign of luxury Definitely. experience. That's okay. correct. Sandals, resorts. 
So what about something if it's more about like your transportation, like private transfers or first class? I know you can have those elements outside of luxury travel, but are they needed to make it a full luxury travel? 100%. Yes. You okay. Cannot, you cannot consider your trip to be luxury unless you get off that plane and see your name on a placard. <gasps> Your name on a and placard. then you're escorted right to your car, and they're carrying your luggage. I don't think it's luxury if you're if you're seeing a, a sign that says "We're the tour company." Get on that motor coach. And That's not luxury. Us. That's not luxury. Luxury is you don't touch your own bags. You, you do don't not. touch your own luggage. Correct. I only know that from an episode of Gilmore Girls because the idea is that foreign to me. Not touching my own luggage. What are you yeah, talking it's about? It's fantastic. Yeah, it really is. And yeah. that, and you know, there's not a huge additional cost to that. I think people think, oh, it's going to be outrageous. It's not a huge additional cost. And again, we have to be willing to accept the services. Those people are there to make sure that our um, our transition periods are done professionally, and that's why you want to do that. Absolutely. Pay for it, people. It's so worth it. It's not a lot. Make sure that your travel advisor knows that you want private transportation. Yes, we want private transportation. Yes. Um, so something else that, and again, I don't know if this was even luxury, but it was the most luxurious travel experience I've ever had. And something that I discovered for the very first time is something called a pillow menu. And I was like... Is this like a fun term for like the menu of the evening? Are they doing like a themed dinner? But no, it was a choice of your variety of pillow types from firm to soft Correct. to the like. Whether so, you want feathers or fake. Um, yeah, it's yeah. amazing. So is that like a luxury thing that's common? And if so, can you please tell me any other weird menus that are out there? Let's put it this way. Uh, in my opinion, the pillow menus have gone away from a luxury product because those pillows and that bedding is already luxury. Like most people probably don't have that at home. Now, if you, that is one thing that we didn't talk about. If you live this way constantly and you go and experience this, then it's pretty much just regular travel for you. It's not necessarily luxury. So um, people if, who live in luxury. if this applies to you, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love right. to get a barometer about well, our listeners. Well, that's a good point. Like, are you going out and buying very expensive pillows, right? What feather yeah. do you have? Is it down? Is it not down? Whatever the case is, firm or soft. But mo for the most part, and every situation I've been in in luxury, the pillows and the bedding are, oh my gosh, you yeah. just want to get in there and you don't want to get out of there. So I would not even need to use a pillow menu when I know I'm in a truly luxury product. So is that more in the, like that up market we it were is. talking about That's where you correct. see those sorts of yes, choices? They're trying to be luxury, but they're they're getting there. Yeah. Yeah. Because they should have spent the money on the bedding and the pillows. They already. should just already have the best have of the it. best That's out there. Correct. Oh, I feel like I'm getting a hang of this, you guys, and getting <laughs> a little bit more bougie in my aspirations. So like when you're in a luxury situation, they aren't about a ton of choices. It's more we've curated this already. Um, well, there's obviously menus for room service that are going to be more geared yeah, toward that. Yeah. Let's just think about, all right, here's a good one. Coach class, uh, premium class and first or business class. Yeah. I mean, you're ordering from a menu in first class, right? In premium class, you get a limited menu in coach class. Here's your chicken dinner. So that same idea is going on throughout the entire process. If you're used to traveling first class, then you already know that you're going to be ordering something very specific. So in my case, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, the menu for the shoes to get done and a separate bag for my shoes, put them out in the morning, they bring them back in the evening. Pressing my clothes, there was a separate tag for that, put that out in the morning, he takes it back, brings it back in the evening. Same with the laundry. And you're not paying for any of this. Not if it's true luxury. Not if it's true luxury. Okay, Correct. so as I always, somehow it always comes back to this on this show. Do you tip? Oh, gratuity is expected. When you're in a luxury situation Absolutely. like that? That's correct. Okay. Yes. That's interesting because I would almost assume that would be more inappropriate because like it's so fancy that it's There's like certain... you don't want my dirty money you know, on your yeah. white gloves like i don't know yeah, it and seems it's not like you're just me. handing off like here's five bucks it's like there's an expectation of that whether it's prepaid whether it's included in your trip because some resorts are like no tipping because it's already included in your trip and right. then there's some that here it is and we recommend additional tipping the problem with tipping, here's the biggest problem with, let's say, a butler, is that, oh my gosh, I don't know how to tip. I'm not going to use him or her. I don't know what to do. You tip as you go. Every time, every time my butler did something for me last week when I was in Europe, I added the gratuity, my level of appreciation. Keep in mind, my gratuities were already included in my price, but this was additional appreciation. So it doesn't have to be a lot of money, right? Because they've already got that. But they, I think for going the extra mile, you always want to acknowledge that. So, Bill, we 
have sort of talked about why it sounds so fun to have a luxury experience. You know, I mean, that customization, the level of service, the attention to detail, the really just feeling like you're not a part of a crowd seems like a big thing with yes. luxury travel. Like, you know, it's a little bit more intimate. So why, why do you think that this is a growing sector, a trending sector of travel? Because I really feel like it's going that way. It, it is so huge, especially with our, our host agency. Um, I, I think it's because um, there's a there's a, a pent up demand for the unknown or the extra, right? So I think those who live in a luxurious um, accommodations in their home just expect it and that's normal for them. Those of us who are living in, in normal circumstances, in contemporary circumstances, want to experience that. And either we've saved the money, we have the credit, we have the ability to do it. So we want to experience it and that's where it's going. And it's really more that personalized and customized service that's happening. And I think that that's what we want to, we want to experience. So as long as those brands are out there and we can ascertain them, we're going to do it. And I think it's only going to grow. I love that. Well, and you know, as we say on most of these shows, if you want to have a fantastic luxury travel experience, the number one piece of advice we're going to have for you is to work with your trusted travel agent, you know, be very transparent about your needs and your questions and, you know, have them be your first step to curating this amazing luxury travel experience. But now I want to speak to travel agents out there and say that if you're wondering how to get started, you know, maybe this is something that you could see being really great for your business or something that you just want to get involved in, what do we have at KHM Travel Group, Bill? Well, we're so fortunate that we have now a luxury symposium that we do every year, and it is so well attended by those who truly either are in the luxury market or want to get into the up market, the premium market, or the luxury market. Right. So and it really gives the agents a very navigatable absolutely. road plan to yes. break into that sector. Correct. And with those discussions and presentations, it's not just, it, it's interactive here at KHM. So the fact is that you are now delineating of what what, what supplier is going to be best for your customer moving forward in the customization process and the ultimate end product, which could be luxury. Yes. And this event is exclusive to Travel Asians with KHM Travel Group. But don't worry if you're not, we're not having our next luxury symposium until September 29th through October 1st of 2025. I love it. So you have plenty of time to sign up. Yes, please get signed <laughs> up and please come because that is the fastest growing segment. Yeah, no, it really no is. Question. I mean, you, I just got an email today from Travel Weekly wow. about luxury travel. And I was like, oh, what a good topic we chose yes. Perfect. <laughs> for this week. So Bill, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for and, having me. You know, I hope that you guys will ask any questions or share any of your luxury travel stories with us. And then, you know, we'll keep having this discussion. Right? And I love it if anyone agrees or disagrees, they should let us know with what we yes. what they heard today. So yeah, I'm all about that. Thanks uh, again for having me. Yeah, no, Bill, thank you so much for being on. And everybody, thank you. And yes, please share your stories and opinions with us in the comments, anywhere on social media using hashtag travel stories unpacked. And keep coming back on Fridays as we're going to keep unpacking all things about travel. This podcast is brought to you by KHM Travel Group, a leading host agency for independent travel agents. Please go to khmtravel.com to learn more.